Good morning everyone and welcome to St John's Sunday Club at Home. Well today this is going to be a very strange start because I've got something to show you. Um, I bet you'll be able to guess what they are as soon as I start unravelling them. These are over a hundred years old because Jenny's granddad used to work in South America when he was a young man, a very young man, and he brought these home with him as souvenirs. And we think that this one is a python. And yes, of course, it's a snake. Now, the other one, I'm hoping you'll be able to tell me what it's, what it's called. Let me just roll this one back up again, pop it back in the basket. Now, this one is slightly different. The other one was a smoother skin, whereas this is a very rough skin. But here we go, there's, it, there's its head. And I'll keep unravelling it. So that you can see it and as we get lower and lower down you might begin to know what this is now if i ask chris to get very very close on the end on its tail you might hear this yes it's a rattlesnake and as i say these were in south america uh, and they were pests Nobody really liked these very much because they got into the houses and obviously they could kill you. So I'm just going to put my snake skins down on the floor. Today we're going to have a snake in our Bible story. And I thought, what game could we possibly play involving snakes? And I thought, yes, there's only one game and that is snakes and ladders. Now what I've done is I haven't got a snakes and ladder board handy at the moment. I think it's packed away in a cupboard somewhere. But I found this one and it's on a website that's quite free and I just printed it out. I'm sure mums or dads would be able to help you if you haven't got a, um, a snakes and ladders board at home. And I went to a, a site called classplayground.com. Okay, so snakes and ladders, I'm sure we all know how this works. Here we go, Chris and I often have a game. Uh, and I'm just going to ask Chris, Chris, how do you feel if you're on number 45 and you throw a two? Oh no! Oh dear. Terrible! There goes Chris, down the snake, and he moves from 47 down to five. However, I quite like it when I'm on, well, let's say if I'm on number 19. I don't know if my finger's in the way, actually, Chris, you'll have to tell me. Okay. If I'm on number 19, what do I need to throw? Have a look at it. What do I need to throw? Easy peasy. If I throw a number one, look what happens. I go right up from number 20 to number 77, and that's a good thing. So snakes and ladders, down the snake, we think thumbs down not good at all up the ladders we think hey that's great so i'm going to leave you to it because if you'd like to find yours or play that at some time that would be a really good game for today um the reading today actually comes from genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 13 and I'm going to read it to you from the International Children's Bible but I forgot to tell you that you might that you're going to need a pencil and a piece of paper for after the reading so if you'd like to pause the video again to get a piece of paper and a pencil that would be great okay Genesis 3 verses 1 to 13 now the snake was the most clever of all the wild animals the Lord had made one day the snake spoke to the woman he said did god really say that you must not eat the fruit from any tree in the garden the woman answered the snake we may eat the fruit from the trees in the garden but god told us you must not eat the fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden you must not touch it or you will die but the snake said to the woman you will not die God knows that if you eat the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden, you will learn about good and evil. The woman saw that the tree was beautiful. She saw that its fruit was good to eat and that it would make her wise and clever. So she took some of its fruit and she ate it. She also gave some of the fruit to her husband who was with her and he ate it. 
then it was as if the man's and the woman's eyes were opened and they realised they were naked. They had no clothes on. So they sewed fig leaves together and made something to cover themselves. Then they heard the Lord God walking in the garden. This was during the cool part of the day and the man and his wife hid from the Lord God among the trees in the garden. But the Lord God called to the man. He called, where are you? The man answered, I heard you walking in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked. I had no clothes on, so I hid. God said to the man, who told you you were naked? Did you eat fruit from that tree I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, You gave this woman to me, and she gave me fruit from the tree, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What have you done? She answered, The snake tricked me, so I ate the fruit. And that's the end of the reading. So I wonder what was going on there then. So the snake tricked the woman. Right, I think what we'll do is we'll have a bit of a quiz. So I've got some questions. All right, if you've got a younger brother or sister who might need a bit of help, you could just do one between the two of you. But I've got nine questions, a bit of a strange number. Okay, question number one. Which animal was the most clever of all the animals that God had made? Number two, who did the snake speak to? Have a think, was it the man or was it the woman? Which tree, for number three, which tree did God say the man and the woman should not eat from? And that, I've got a clue here because it's where the tree was. Think where the tree was. Now, number four, what did the snake say would happen if they ate the fruit from that tree? Would they die or would they learn about good and evil? Number five. The woman ate some of the fruit and she gave some away. Who did she give it to? Who did she give it to? Number six. It says in the reading that their eyes were opened and they realised they didn't have any clothes on. So what did they sew together to cover themselves with? What did they sew together? Number seven. What did the man and woman do when God called to them? If you remember, God just called and they did something straight away. I wonder why they did that. Number eight. God asked the man, who had given him the fruit to eat? Who was it? And number nine, last one. God asked the woman what she'd done. And would you believe it? She blamed someone. Who did she say had tricked her? Who did she say had tricked her? Right, that's the end of the quiz. I'm not going to ask Chris to... Uh, I'm not going to ask Chris to turn off. I've just thrown my paper on the floor. So I'm just going to pick it up again. Because I think you want some answers. Okay, answer to number one. The most clever of all the animals was the snake. Number two, the snake spoke to the woman. Number three, it's one point for each of these. Number three, God said that the man and the woman shouldn't eat from the tree in the middle of the garden. And what did the snake say would happen? That they would learn about good and evil. They wouldn't die at all. They'd learn about good and evil. Do you know, when you think about that one, that snake was, well, he was being a bit mean because he was really encouraging the man and the woman to stop believing in God. That doesn't sound very nice, does it? The woman ate some of the fruit. Who did she give some to? She gave some to her husband, to the man. Because... She thought it'd be quite nice to learn new things uh, and she thought she wouldn't actually uh, she wouldn't actually wait and do what God said. She was attracted by the snake's offer. She thought it was a good idea. 
Number six, their eyes were open and what did they sew together when they realised they hadn't any clothes? Clothes, that was fig leaves. Fig, fig leaves. And that's really sad because they'd been very, very happy before the sneaky snake. And now they weren't happy any longer. So the answer to number six is fig. What did the man and woman do when God called them? Number seven, they hid. And I think you can have an extra mark if you put they hid among the trees and bushes. And they hid because they were worried because they hadn't got any clothes on. They'd realised that they hadn't got any clothes on. God asked the man who had given him the fruit to eat. And of course, the answer to number eight, who gave the man the fruit? It was the woman. And for number nine, God asked the woman what she'd done. And as we said, who did she blame? She said someone had tricked her. And the answer to number nine, again, is the snake. She blamed the snake. And I'm wondering how many times we actually blame others and we don't actually take responsibility for the things that we've done. OK, then, that's our Bible story. But what does it mean to us? Because, um, well, we're all good, aren't we? You know, we only do good things, don't we? Oh, I don't think so. I actually think, well, I know for me, there's a little bit of good and a little bit of bad. And I think if we look around the world now, we'll see things that are good and things that are bad. I'm just thinking of a couple, but I'm sure you can think of some more. I think about Captain Tom. I mean, Captain Tom encouraged us by his walking. He encouraged people to walk around. He encouraged them to exercise. He, he got money for charity. And he was good. What about the nurses? I've got a friend at the moment who is doing her normal job. But on the days when she doesn't normally work, she's working from seven o'clock in the morning till seven o'clock in the evening, giving people the, the new COVID vaccine. That's good. Well, I'm sure that you can think of other things that are, are going well in the world at the moment, that are good things, that are the thumbs up things. But what about the bad things? What about the going down the snake things? There was something on the news a few weeks ago about a nurse who had been working all of these hours and she returned home to find that her house had been burgled and things had been stolen. Well, that's definitely a bad thing. Uh, closer to home, I remember going away once to see my mum uh, and coming back and finding that someone had deliberately stepped on the daffodils in the front garden. It might seem a trivial thing, but, you know, why do that? Why do people do bad things? Well... We can get even closer by thinking about ourselves. Is there a little bit of good and bad in all of us? Um, well, it, it'd be lovely to think that we were all good and we always did good things all the time. But I suspect that, like me, there might be times when we listen to the snake and we don't listen to God. Um, and maybe we do things that maybe aren't quite the right things to do. Maybe we do things that are a bit like that and not so much like that. So... When things get tricky for us, we've got to listen to God. And I think you've been absolutely brilliant at listening. And I think it's time for a song break. Let's sing Faith as Small as a Mustard Seed. I'm sorry, I, I forgot what it was called then. Faith as Small as a Mustard Seed. Well, Faith as Small as a Mustard Seed. I know that you were learning some of these actions with Michael a few weeks ago, uh, but I can't do both. So I'm just going to play it, have a think about the, uh, about the actions and join in with the words. Faith as small as a mustard seed.
Well, faith as small as a mustard seed and God will do anything for us when we pray. We've got to remember that. So I wonder how that fits in with our good and bad. Well, let's think what might be happening inside us. We've thought about the world. What about inside us? Is it all good? Is there a bit of both? Is there a little bit of good and a little bit of bad? Let's have a think. There are times when we have to make choices and we have to decide, shall we do what is the good thing to do or shall we do what is the bad thing to do? And we have to remember that we're not on our own because Jesus can help us make those choices. Let's think about, uh, there you are, you're playing with your favourite toy. You've taken yourself to your bedroom or to a quiet corner of the house. You're playing away and suddenly your little brother, big brother, older sister arrives and says, Oh, can I come and play now, please? What goes through your head? Could it be, yeah, great. Come on, come on, come and play, we'll share. Or could it be, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sharing today. Go away, go, go and play with something in your room. I wonder which one we should do. We have to think about it. Another one might be, if mum asks you to put away your toys after you've been playing, she might say, toys away now, please, Anne. Uh, you know, it's time for tea. Now, I can remember my choices because I could put my dolls back in the cot with the covers and that would be great. I could put the books back on the bookshelf, that would be great. But I do think there might have been times when I might have just pushed a few things under my bed just to make it look as if it was tidy. So how do we try and do the right thing? How do we try and do the good and not the bad? Well, faith as small as a mustard seed. If we believe in God and Jesus is our friend, he's inside us. And being inside us, he can help us to do the good thing and not the bad thing. I think we should probably finish with a prayer now. So I'm going to say a prayer. If you'd just like to close your eyes, that would be lovely. Dear Jesus, in our lives we have lots of choices to make between doing what is right and doing what is wrong. Please help us to make good decisions. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We started this morning by talking about the snakes and ladders game and uh, it'd be lovely if you've got a chance to play snakes and ladders, that would be great. But I was thinking of a craft and I thought, I'm not actually going to sit here today and, and do it. But I wondered if you'd like to make a snakes and ladders board. Now, there are a hundred squares on there and you might not want to do a hundred squares. It's up to you how many squares you make. And I also think that if you ask someone in your house who's very good on the computer, they might be able to download you a blank playing board just with blank squares on it. And what I thought it'd be really good to do is, well, as this one, um, well, as this one has just numbers in the boxes, and remember it goes one to whatever your number is, and then it goes up and then across, it sort of zigzags up the page. I just thought it would be very good to think of something to write in the box with the number. So if you do your numbers quite small, then maybe when you've drawn your first ladder, you could think of something that would be a good thing to do. It might be, oh, I don't know, it might be help with the washing up. So that when someone lands on that, it's a good thing to do, and they would be able to go up the ladder to whatever number you've got. It's number 23 here. And likewise, when you've got your snakes on, why not think of a bad thing that you could do to write in there? And it might be something that you could do, but you would choose not to. It might be shouting at your friend. And so when you land on that one here, it's number 47, you would get to go down the snake. So all you'll need is you'll need a playing board You'll need some crayons, some colouring things, uh, and maybe a pencil or a pen to write with because the boxes won't be very big. They won't be as small as this though. Um, and then maybe you could play them with your family. And I think the thing that we've learned today is that, yes, there is good and there is evil in the world. There's good and bad in all of us. But we're really lucky because we've got Jesus inside us. We've got the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit can help us to decide the good things to do or the bad things to do.
Thank you for listening.